brothers and sisters, friends and family, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for spending these few minutes hanging out as we can chat and have just a, an amazing chat and we can talk about something that I have found for my life to be a changing point, a point from truly where I was headed to death spiritually. As a Christian for 30 plus years, I knew a doctrine that said once saved was always saved. I worshiped on a Sunday because they said it's the Lord's day. And so we were able to go from the, the seventh day, the Sabbath day, to the first day. And I thought that was all right. And I also believed in a mysterious three-in-one God. I described it to people as a, an egg, where there was a shell and a yolk and a, uh, <clears throat> the stuff around the outside. It's all an egg, but it's really three in one. And in that three in one, I, I believe that I could pray to Jesus. I believe that Jesus would answer my prayers. And I also believe that we had eternal grace and that grace was just given to a people who more very wrong in our approach to how we lived because we were not living as our creator has told us to live. And I remember the time when I started investigating what the Sabbath day was and why it was so important to our creator. And I couldn't find anywhere in scriptures that would lead me to believe that the Sabbath day was any other day than the seventh day. And so I decided that I better start investigating this and the best way to ever investigate this is to begin, begin on page one. Page one begins with a set of words that our creator has established for us that tells us about the beginnings. It tells us about our origins. It tells us about how the succession of the world came to be and how it is what we are where we are at. It tells us about a race of giants that came to destroy mankind. And it also talks about a giant flood that came to save mankind because they were being destroyed by giants. <clears throat> all of these words and all of these stories have been preserved for us. And in these words, starting on page one and ending at the end of Revelations and beyond into the Apocrypha, there's no such place that the words of our Creator have been torn away. There's no such place that it says that we shouldn't value them. In fact, the greatest thing that we have ever been given in our lives is this doctrine of our creator that religion has lied to us and said, it doesn't matter. It says there's no value to it. It doesn't matter if it says not to harm the disabled. It doesn't matter if it says not to look at your family naked. It doesn't matter if it says to have correct weights and measurements. It doesn't matter if it says to take care of the, the orphans and the widows. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. But it does matter. Because not only is it really, really good advice that comes from the creator of the universe, and the advice isn't just advice. Our creator says, listen, I will be your Elohim. I will be your God. You can be my people. But it's a contract. It's a covenant. It's not a set and forget. It's not a raise your hand at eight years old. It's not getting on your knees and asking Jesus into your heart. None of that is in scriptures. None of that exists. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that until I read the Bible. And so I'd like to encourage every one of you guys to read these scriptures and read them as a love letter from our creator to you. Read them as the gift that they have truly been given, which is the greatest gift of all. Now that goes against Christianity because Christianity will say, Jesus is the only thing that matters. The only thing that matters at all. Well, number one, my friends, is there was no letter J until the 1500s. So our Messiah's name is not Jesus. His name is Yahushua. Yeshua. Yahusha. Somewhere in there lies the perfect name. And in fact, Yeshua is an offset of Yahushua. It's just another way to say it. And so 
when you look at that name alone, and that name means salvation, we have a we have salvation. Now, the salvation does not take away the laws of our Creator. This salvation is able to break the the spiritual curse of the Torah from the second that we put our hand in the cookie jar when we were three years old. <clears throat> the way forward is the Torah. If you want to be a follower of our Messiah, our Messiah his, has always been very clear that we should keep the Torah. He comes in his father's name. He comes in the actions and the deeds of his father. He is literally the Torah made flesh. How can he be the Torah made flesh? Because he existed with his father, Yahuwah. Yahuwah and Yahushua existed together in a realm prior to the world we're in right now. So you have a father and you have a son combo. You have the first five books of scriptures, the Torah. The Torah was established before creation was ever created. So we have a perfect combo. We have our creator. We have the Torah. We have his son, who is the ambassador, who is the king of the kingdom to come. Our, our Messiah, our king, the one who's going to be running the city of Elohim, the new Jerusalem, is going to be our Messiah, Messiah Yahushua. The same individual that came and did it for us, that walked the Torah perfectly, that ministered to us, that taught us all the way, that taught us a way that he's going to be running his kingdom, his father's kingdom. This is an absolute beautiful combo of a setup and a system and a creator and a son who love humanity and love the way forward. And the way of our creator is righteousness. It's holiness. It's a clean way of living. It's not pornography. It's not Sunday worship. It's not eating unclean foods like pigs. It's not watching horrible movies. It's not leading your family astray. It's about loving your family, keeping your family together, keeping yourself squeaky clean, not becoming an adulterer day after day. Not lusting after women, not lusting after men, not being a man whore or a woman whore. That's not the way of the kingdom. The way of the kingdom is that squeaky way. It's the way that our Messiah talks about. And what you're looking at right here is you're looking at the greatest version of scriptures that has ever existed, guys. And this is Yah Scriptures. You can find it at YahScriptures.com. For every scriptures that goes out, our brothers and sisters in chains were able to get a scriptures into them. This is a limited edition. This is one of these editions that is, um, we hope it's going to be long term. We hope it's going to be something that is something we're able to reorder. But for right now, we have them left. And so this is a huge book, guys. This is uh, over six pounds. The three different bookmarks, the significance of the three bookmarks and the colors is that they are the same colors that, they, that our creator loves that he put into his temple. When he was building the temple, he put all of these colors into it, which is why the color of the front color is the same that our creator had in his temple. And so this is literally his scriptures. This is his, his bookmark. <clears throat> and guys, this is large print. This is for us that like to read and read and read. It's 103 books. It has the Apocrypha. It has the, it has the pagan names gone. This is the greatest English translation you will ever find. And so guys, grab it while you can. And let's get into this. And for anyone that has not um, gone through these series, we've been just reading. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it to the end. There's not that many verses left till the end. But you guys, you know how we sit and chat. It gets, um, we get long-winded. I get long-winded. And so for that, I apologize. Um, I see the retention on this is about seven or eight minutes. So a lot of you fall off right out of the gate. A lot of you fall off probably about the time you hear about the Torah. Well, hopefully uh, for those fam who stick around, much love to you and thank you again for being a part of this this reading. Um, we're in the book of Nazarene. This is the very last book in Yah's scriptures. And one brother or sister was asking if, if I write any of what we talk about down. And I don't, guys. I don't even know what we're reading because I don't. This is one of the series that I don't like pre read. I've read this book over and over and over, but I don't know exactly where we're at. I do know the topic of where we're at. But um, all of this is spontaneous. All of this is just us chit chatting, going over thoughts. And um, it's just, it's, it's hopefully yaw driven. 
Now, the book of the Naturium, we this is our Messiah, Yahushua, and he's he's walking among men. He's talking about different things. And I wanted to touch briefly on 63, and we went through that last time. But the last part of 63 is is was is very controversial when it comes to uh, religions. All of these religions, and I will tell you without a shadow of a doubt, if, if you're in a religion, they have lied to you. They have told you words that are not true. They have you doing traditions of men and things that are unacceptable and abomination to our creator. They have you eaten unclean foods because they, they brainwashed you into thinking that literally uh, food that is janitorial critters should be eaten and it, it shouldn't. But the last part of this right here um, is, is all about keeping Torah. And the last sentence right here, he says, I tell you this, many will come, but few will be selected. Those are, are the, the last really, really effective things that we, we got from the last, last segment. We know from scriptures, not just the book of the Nazarene here, but we know that most people don't make it. We hear about the gate. We hear about the wide path to destruction. And Messiah also tells us in Matthew that most people don't make it. So this isn't anything new. This is just reiterating the same stuff that um, our Messiah has already said. And our Messiah is very, very clear. He says you need to keep the Torah. The laws of our creator, the laws of his father, they are good. They are easy. They are light. They are wonderful. They are life. They are breath. They are everything wonderful. And we've all been lied to when some liars have said they're they mean nothing, right? That's the words of Satan. When people say the laws have been done away with and they don't matter anymore, it's it's sickening, right? It's, it's very, very sick. Continue. Let's begin. This is what Messiah said, right? He said, Moshe viewed the promised land only from Pisgah. Let this not be your fate. All right. Whoa, what's happening? This is, well, we know that Moshe, Moses, when he broke the tablets, when he was, when he, he was actually, well, this was actually when he struck the rock. When he struck the rock, um, what he was supposed to do is he was supposed to go and he was supposed to speak to the rock. But because the people of Israel are always stiff-necked, they're always rebels, they're always up to no good, they're always fighting for a position, they were always messing with Moshe, his, his um, leadership. So he went and he like smashed the rock with a stick and water flowed out. Yah made sure that that's what happened. Um, but because of that, Moses never ever got to go into the promised land. He got to go up to the very top of the hill. And he got to look into this beautiful, beautiful land. But he never ever got to do that. So he led these people for years and years and years and heard them complaining and bickering and moaning. And he never ever got to step in. The lesson with that. Messiah says, let this not be your fate. Well, guys, our promised land is the kingdom to come. Our promised land is a, is a world surrounded by people that love our creator, love his ways, love his son, love righteousness. You know, <clears throat> this is going to be a good place. It's going to be a wonderful place. We don't want to be these people that are not in, on Mount Sinai, in the, in the, in the, the New Jerusalem, looking in. We don't want to be on the other side. This is the lesson. How can we end up on the other side? Well, if we're lawbreakers, if we are the people that don't know the law, don't care about the law, haven't applied the laws to our life, that's what the people that don't make it. Depart from me, ye who are lawless, ye who are Torahless, ye who are in iniquity. It is all the exact same word. Now, continuing on, Messiah says, face the difficulties ahead. Overcome the evildoers who maintain the rule of evil and claim your reward. The sword is drawn, but the battle has yet to be won. Okay, again, being Torah keepers, being in covenant with our creator, the devil hates us. Blessings from the devil don't exist. The blessings from the devil exist when you're out of covenant, when you are with the rest of the world. The devil thrives his people. The devil loves his people. It's just that he knows how to make money just like everybody else. But you know what? Our lives are supposed to be difficult. This is a testing ground where we have been given 120 years to see if we're tough enough and strong enough and courageous enough and loyal enough to be 
members of the kingdom to come. We're going to have tests. We're going to be tested. Our lives could be have a, a, a crux. We could have issues all our lives in something. Our, we, our health could be a lifetime of health. We Some of us can't even walk. Some of us can't see, right? There's are going to be all of these things, but this is temporary. The kingdom to come is something that is established. It, it is already established. It is already something that is in the root. It is already something that is in the root of the timeline, and it's on its way. It is on its way. And I believe scriptures without a shadow of a doubt, because all of these scriptures have been established. I look at the world and I see the world and I see the evil that is <clears throat> running amok. I see a world that hates laws of our creator, that hates modesty, that hates uh, non-corruption. We are living in such a terrible, terrible time. I cannot wait. For a rule of righteousness, a rule under the Torah, a rule under the laws of our creator. That's what we're missing in this world right now. Messiah then says, you know, the sword is drawn, but the battle has yet to be won. Guys, run until you can breathe your last breath no more, but never ever give it up. Fight for the side of the kingdom. Be courageous. Never ever give in to evil. Never ever give in to the devil. If you, you're going to fall down, Stand up, dust yourselves off, lick your wounds, dry your eyes, and continue marching on because the kingdom is what we're, we're marching for. 65, Messiah says this. <clears throat> In the reborn world, the wolf shall lay down with the lamb and the lion with the kid, and a little child shall play with them. He, we've heard this before, right? This is, this is the lion lamb, right? In the, in the reborn world. This is the world we're talking about, right? This is the kingdom to come. This is, this is in the kingdom to come and beyond, right? In a reborn world, the wolf shall lay down with the lamb and the lion with the kid and the ch little child shall play with him. It'll be fun, right? We all get to pet lions, right? We all get to pet tigers. We're not going to get our face clawed off. It's going to be a different kind of world. The, the animals aren't going to be against us. It's going to be a different kind of animals. Surely, because of their goodness and goodwill, even the beasts will submit themselves to the will of those who participate in the rule of Elohim. Won't it be super cool to have a giraffe come by? like jump on the back of a rhino and this this thing like takes you for a ride. I believe that in the, in the kingdom to come, we'll be able to, we'll have our pets. I believe our pets all have souls. I'm convinced at this point after reading scriptures that our pets are going to be waiting for those that, that the, the ones that we have loved, that we have lost as, as pet owners and, and those who have, have submitted our hearts to the furry, furry animals of the world. I believe that's going to be some of our, 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 reward some of that I, why why couldn't the hand of our creator do things like that he could do whatever he wants surely that's that's something that he's, he's thinking about if not i'm gonna submit to him please bring my pets back i love them okay now um sounds cool right so, sounds cool let's go 66 when yahushua finished speaking <clears throat> the great assembly of people was silent for unlike other teachers he appeared inspired by divine authority but within moments, they were excitedly discussing the words among themselves. This is the power of Messiah, right? <clears throat> the words our Messiah has are the words of a child who lived with his father under that same rulership before ever coming to our world. This is why he knew his father's words. This is why you did not want to argue with Messiah. Messiah was like one of the greatest arguers the debaters of all times he left people speechless and so this whole group of people they heard this and messiah's like just stopped these people were absorbing this and they're like wow listen and so he's just a, he's a a polarizing uh he's a polarizing guy for all this continuing on how far into this are we 19 i think all right we're good <coughs> excuse me then a talmud a disciple who stood beside yahushua shouted all who serve yahuwah Praise him, for he has sent the true enlightener and the deliverer, and he and will himself reign over us through the Ruach, which fills his bin. Heed these things. Follow the way of Yahushua. Yahushua. Take up the stake of life, and the rule of Elohim is at hand. Okay, um, this is... Uh, this is one of these guys. This is one of these things. These guys, at this point, a lot of these guys thought... This was going to be the ruler. This was going to be the one that freed them from the Romans. It was going to be the one that came in and was like the true 
the true king. And a lot of people thought this all the way to when Messiah died. A lot of people thought he was going to be the one that like physically ruled them right there. Well, this this disciple who stood behind Yahushua said, all who serve Yahuwah, praise him, right? One thing that we are, that everyone should understand is our creator is the creator. He's he's the man. He's he's the one. There is no one but him. If there was somebody else other than him, if, if there were two gods or three gods, then scriptures, especially when our scripture says Yahuwah is one, would be incorrect. All the times that Messiah Yahushua, Jesus, said that he is not his father, that he comes in the name of his father, that he's doing the will of his father, that he is indeed not his father, then he would have to be a liar. I mean, he's not a liar, right? We're, we don't have liars and deceivers on this side. That's what the Hasatan does. And that's why we have all of these different religions, uh, Christianity, 41,000 of just that, this niche of religion. Then you have Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, all the all these other stuff, right? There's a zillion different ways. Now, continuing on, um, this guy's this guy's like firing everybody up, right? Uh, he has sent so the, they've been waiting. These people have been waiting for an enlightener. They've been waiting for him to deliver, and him he he will himself reign over us through the ruach, which fills his son. And again, this is a another witness that's talking about Yahushua, and it says which which fills his son. Nothing we're saying here says that Yahushua and Yahuwah are, are the exact same thing. It always says that he's going to be ruling through him, through his son. That's the, that's the cool thing. When Messiah died, when Yahushua died, it was literally the father who allowed his son to be mercilessly killed at the hands of the humans. His own creation killed his own son. Crazy, right? I mean, this is the, the ways of our creator are... Are wild. Okay, 68. There were many among the crowd who said, Surely this is Yahuwah's anointed, for whom we have long awaited. Now we will be delivered according to the promises of the Nevium. And again, these people are looking at a deliverer on land, right? Like a King David that has come back and they don't understand yet, right? They do not understand. Most most of them don't, right? And all of these people, they they eventually most of them all turned turned on him, right? Um, there wasn't, you know, the, the crowds, there wasn't enough strength amongst the crowds ever to save Messiah from his, his final fate and his final days. And it's, there's just, there's, you know, he was, everybody turned on him. And so continuing on, uh, 69, hearing these things said by the people among themselves, Yahushua was saddened and said to Bartholomew who stood near him. Tomorrow they will revert to their old way of life and promote evil to reign through hypocrites and self-deceivers. So, you know, that, you know, that's, that's the thing is, is Messiah knows all this and you have an entire crowd of people. They're all just like, they, they get that, they get that Sunday feel, right? When the, the piano's playing and people are singing and they feel like the, the Holy Spirit is in there with them, but it's, it's, there's nothing. It's not, it's not from our creator and they're just, they're not listening. The people aren't going to listen. And Messiah continues on and says, how can they be brought to understand that should Yahuwah intervene to bring about the rule of Elohim, earth and mankind will have failed him and be unworthy of his rule. Life's purpose is to produce shepherds, not sheep, but the lives of the people are turned inward upon themselves. Huge words, guys. Huge, huge words, right? Imagine this entire crowd that's sitting right there that got it, that went, oh, man, I get this. And all of a sudden, this entire crowd went off and started teaching the, the, the ways of our creator, teaching the law, statutes, and commands, and becoming ministers of the kingdom to come, right? That's what we're all called to be. We're all called to be that courageous person that's out there talking to people, telling people about the way forward. This is not something that we hide our light under a, a bushel. Right, it's we go to the top of the, the the hill to where the entire city can see us, and we we shout from the top of the hill that hey, the reign of the Elohim is within our grasp. It is it is here, and it is for people who are law keepers, it is people who love our Messiah, for people who love the ways and the 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 future process and the future ways of of a a community that truly loves our Creator, and so. We're called to be these shepherds, all of us, 
if you know the Torah, if you know scriptures, if you know the way forward, tell the people, help the people, minister to those, give, uh, you know, there's so many different ways. I'm always talking about the, the, the homeless and, you know, the, the U S has such a major homeless problem right now that, you know, you can go find, you know, go find some, like, I don't know if they have them still in the U S but some place has 79 cent hamburgers and load up a bag of them and go find the, the nearest people that are living in a tent or living on the street or people that haven't had a meal and go sit with them and talk to them and go give a couple hamburgers out and tell them, hey, you know what? There's a set of laws or static a set of commandments. And I don't know if you've ever heard about them, but a lot of people have, have only heard about our Messiah, but they have not heard about the, the other things that are needed. And so all of these things, and you can establish a lot of friendships. You can find a tremendous amount of people that are so responsive. And when you give a little bit of love, there's a tremendous amount of response. And you will find that, and you will also find that as we're ministering to these brothers and sisters in chains. We have broken through hardened serial killers that didn't say a word for years and years and years. And now they're just opening up into letters and to writing and they're reading their scriptures and they're, they're praising our creator and they're seeking his commandments and seeking his ways. They're meditating on them. Their lives are done. They're, com they're, they're coming up for execution, but now they're figuring it out. And a lot of them are, are just like, wow, it took all of this that I could have figured this out on my own on the streets, but it took all this to get this, that I could get this message. And it's just, it's, it's an incredible place. Continuing on. Oh, we're going to make it to the end, guys. Look at that. Two more verses. We've done it. 28. All right, guys. 70. It was now late in the day, but many people still lingered. And a disciple, a Talmud, said to Yahushua, Adonai, the crowd was very large. And many did not hear all your words. Could you not speak to these? For though hungry... They would rather listen to you. Yahushua said, My throat aches, but I have bread more satisfying than that which fills the stomach, and meat more to satisfying than worldly meat. My supply is inexhaustible. I have multiplied this through you. So now you go among the people and provide what they need. Guys, this is a call to action. This is a call from our Creator's Son. From the leader of the new world who's going to be leading a, an incredible place. It's our turn. It is our turn it, to rise up and to, to tell others about this. Give them the word. The cool thing about Yah Scriptures, guys, you can go to yahscriptures.com. In the downloads is every version of this same thing that you're reading right here. This What you're seeing right here is the Google version. It's absolutely free of charge. The, the, the PDFs are free of charge. Everyone that has any kind of digital device out there, you can send the Yah scriptures to them and just send it in an email. And you can say, listen, here, this is the complete scriptures. If you start reading, this is a love letter from our creator to you. You might find some, some change in your life. You might find some hope. There might be something there. But guys, we're not going to go forward unless we're planting the seeds. We're not going to go forward unless we are doing the work. Our kingdom is calling us. Our leader, who's our Messiah, is calling us. So I, I am seeking those who are willing to get fired up for the kingdom and those who know what I'm talking about because these the Torah is exciting. Guys, this is an exciting thing. These commands are super, super exciting. Who else tells you things like be fruitful and multiply, right? Our parents always should, but they don't tell them straight up in this word. They don't, they don't say be fruitful. They try to kick our butts off the, off the the computers and get us going. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. The herb bearing in every tree is for food. Men and women should build their own families. That's right there a commandment that we should be out there. It should be Adam and Eve. It shouldn't be Adam and Steve, right? It should be man and woman out there building families and multiplying and having kids and, and replenishing the earth and doing what goes against the current flow, right? That's what it is. Every clean moving thing that lives should be food for you. Don't eat the blood. Walk before me in perfect. Be perfect. These are all the commands that our Messiah was telling us we need to keep. These are all these same commands that are very, very beneficial. And guys, look at this. The one that is the one that has more pages, it's like two and a quarter pages, is this one. Guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. Our creator didn't say this once or twice or three times or four times or ten times or twenty times or thirty times. 
Says it over 53 times, guys. Right there. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations, right? We're supposed to know the name of our creator and everyone says his name is God because they've taken his name out thousands and thousands of times. We're supposed to be keeping things like Passover. But instead, people keep this this Ishtar. It's a thing with uh, this is fertility goddess that used to sacrifice children They they over the 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 altars on Easter morning, which people call Easter morning, and they would, uh, you know, dip eggs in the blood of the children. That's so that's, you know, that's what we're not supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be keeping the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Festival of Matzah. And there's a the big one, right? Right? There's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Hebrew. It doesn't matter who you are. It matters that if you want to be a child of the Most High, if you want to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments, you're grafted in. That's what it means being grafted in. Grafted in doesn't mean that you're going to be able to sit there and eat pork and uh, worship on the wrong day and not care about the laws of our creator because Messiah very clearly says that you'll be told to, to be, he'll tell you to go to hell. So all of these things right here, right? There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. Don't make graven images, right? All these crosses that you have on your chest or your things in your house, we're not, those are graven images. Again, don't bring Yahuwah's name to not. Don't, don't say things. Here it is. Here's a big one. Keep the Sabbath day. Look how many times that's reiterated. People say there's no Sabbath day, right? It's just the Lord's day because uh, Jesus rose from that day and so they can trump the will of our Creator by replacing the day. Messiah would flip the tables. He would start whipping you guys with horse horse tails for doing things like this. It's crazy. On your parents, do not kill, do not break wedlock, do not steal. Look at these great things, guys. Look at these amazing things right here. So easy to keep. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, uh, do not lie with the beast. Let's uh, let's put that one on the cross, guys. Let's let's uh, fulfill that one, right? Because uh, you know they do it. They do it all over the place. There's dog brothels. There's all sorts of horrible, evil abominations in this world, right? Look at that. Do not charge your brother interest. That's a command reiterated three times. Important. These things are terrible, right? Oh, they're so hard to so hard to keep. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. Oh, man, the roadkill. We shouldn't be eating the roadkill, but you know what? These laws are on the cross, so we can do all this stuff, so we just get sick, deathly sick, and then we can go hang out with the dudes with the white coats. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Guys, look at these commands, man. Every single one of these things are amazing. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Man, guys, these are amazing laws. These are things you won't find anywhere else except in scriptures. Obey the messenger, the angel Yahuwah sends before you. Be ready. Understand things. Serve Yahuwah. There's only one God. There's only one Elohim, and his name is Yahuwah. You know, there's do not eat the fat. Return what is your neighbor's, right? Oh, these are bad laws. We don't we should steal our neighbor's stuff. Right? This is what happens when you say that the the laws of our creator on the cross, then you don't have a set of morals. These are the only way that you guys would know in, what iniquity is, is by reading these. We're showing you guys right here what iniquity is. And this is what we're supposed to be writing on our hearts, on our minds, on our souls. It's supposed to be things like this, right? Do not <laughs> defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage and they are due. Uh, do not harm the disabled. Guys, is this how hard are these, right? You've been lied to. These religious scumbags have lied to you. They're taking your 10% and they've made themselves rich. They build all these churches that are not churches by our creator. Don't practice sorcery. Oh, that should be on the cross too, right? Don't cut yourself for the dead. Should we all be out there cutting ourselves all the time? No, it's against the laws. Don't get tattoos, right? Don't consult the mediums, the spiritualist people. Stay away from them. They're supposed to be killed. Continuing on, right? There's some feasts that we're supposed to be keeping, right? First fruits, a feast of trumpets. That's fun. Sukkot, you get to camp out for seven days. What's pff, nothing wrong with that, right? This is preparing his people right here. Preparing Yah's people for an exodus. You got to know where you're camping. You might be on foot getting over to that, that promised land one day. On foot with some angel in front of you. Taking you out, as the scriptures say. Right? Wear tzitzit on the four corners of your garments. Are you guys doing that? Are you guys Yah's people? 
You should have blue threads on all four corners of your garments. Amazing things. Don't add or take away from the word. Right? Or everybody sitting on worshiping on Sunday, you're adding or taking away from the word. You're breaking commandments. Keeping Easter, you're breaking commandments. Keeping Christmas, you're breaking commandments. We don't have any commands for this. We're adding to Torah by keeping man's festivals. Guard your soul. <laughs> Our creator even tells us, hey, save the thing that you can only take out of this world. The only thing you're ever going to make it out with is your soul. It's time to guard that. Fear Yahuwah, right? That's important. We're not going to make it to the Shamaim. We're not going to make it to heaven of the promised land unless we do this in fear and trembling. He doesn't, we're not, we shouldn't be given anything, right? We're, we, we are broken humans that our creator has, has thankfully given us grace and mercy and given us a Messiah and given us scriptures, given us laws. But if we don't know these, this is on us, right? Do not tempt Yahuwah. You're tempting him because uh, you don't know his words. And not keeping them, right? Cleave to Yahuwah, right? You cleave to Yahuwah by reading scriptures, by praying, by staying close to him. Rejoice in all that Yahuwah has blessed you with, right? Here's a command. We are supposed to be blessed, right? Thanking him. We have life. We have, if you could still breathe, if you could still see, if we still have an ounce of life left in us, then that is a blessing that our creator has given us this time to live in this world that he has. Do not do what is right in our own eyes. People worshiping on the wrong day, eating pig, laughing when you say that there's the Leviticus 11 dietary laws, right? So these are all good things, guys. These are all things that we should be writing on our heart, mind, and soul. And when we get to the end of this, we'll call this one good. And if you made it to the end of this one, and you guys are straight fam. Straight fam, yo. So thank you all. Much love to you all. I hope this blesses somebody. I hope that you guys will write these laws, statutes, and commandments on your hearts, on your mind, on your soul. And um, we're getting to the end. We're at, we're at the end right there. All right, guys. Big hugs to all. I love you all. Have a good day. I'm out.